Okay, how's everybody doing? So I want to show you how I made this sign, the Philly sign, uh, as you see here in the painting. Um, this is just one of many ways. You can like experiment, like try every method that you can or whatever suits you or whatever's convenient or easier at the time. Uh, I've made these where I've actually just cut out a photocopy of a sign and then just paste it right onto a piece of plastic or wood and then put some like a, a, a thin Vallejo matte clear finish, right? Like I always use a matte to seal, um, you know, paper, but this isn't paper. This is a dry transfer, okay? I'm gonna show you how I do that. Dry transfers are cool because they look like paint and you can do any color background that you want, right? You're not forced to, to stick with a uh, photocopy, which is okay too, right? Like. I've made lots of signs from photocopy cutouts and stuff, and they look fantastic when they're done properly. And when they're mounted, they're easy. You don't even have to thin them down. You just mount them right onto a piece of backing, board, wood, plastic, whatever, and paint them over and flat coat them, and they look pretty good. But this one's dry transfers, and then a little bit of hand painting of the cigar there. And then I, I kind of took a little brush and, and sort of, roughed in the font a bit because I didn't have this kind of font. It's You can only see a tiny glimpse of it, but it almost looked like it was hand painted and added on later or something. So I wanted that look. I wanted a look that it was sort of thrown together during the Depression. Even though this building is in the modern era, like a an Art Deco Nishi Reno kind of thing and you know, in the 2000 period, that's the idea behind it in New Westminster. That was common. There was a trend like that, like a... Um, you know, uh, 10, 20 years ago where people were doing that when the economy was good and they were doing the, you know, nostalgic diner uh, reno and stuff. But anyway, um, I'll just explain to you how I built this because I sort of left it out, but it's pretty basic, right? So I use, like for signers, like I'll use generally 30 thou and then 40 thou for O scale and then 20 or 10 thou for N. But you can use either or for any scale, it's up to you. It's just the thinner the, the, the sheet, the more flimsy it is, right? And you gotta kind of beef it up more to make it rigid. And then I just use, in this case, HO scale two by threes. See the numbers there? 90, 30. And if you buy a pack of these, you get 20 sheets. You can build, you know, quite a few signs uh, with this, so. And then there's two by threes for trim, right? I like to see the trim here. See it? I just framed it in with glue. So it's all white first. I'm going to jump to that in the tutorial and show you how I paint it and then put on these dry transfers, seal it, weather it, and then um, I don't know if I showed how I mounted it, but it, uh, you can see I just mounted it with a spot of CA just at the front where this mount is, the base. Just put a bead under the sign and then set it in place. And then I took the Vallejo matte resin clear and I just painted it all in like you can't even tell right like there's a little bit of a stain there but it looks like tar that's what's cool about it see that like when I put the mat onto this roof remember how the roof if you go back how it turned out nice and chalky and then when I put the matte varnish it it looks like you know when they put down a roof and they have to bolt it down and then they'll tar it so it doesn't leak so that worked out too right I've had a lot of luck with this model, actually, when you think about it. But anyway, um, I'll show you how, to, how I did this sign, okay? So I got these four browns, right? <laughs> Drop them. Don't you hate it when you, you know, the nice thing about these is you don't spill paint with these. I've spilled a few bottles of Tamiya, believe me. Um, this is 7104.2. It's just called dark brown. It's got some red in it. I think I'm going to use this. This is rust. I'll use that for a wash. 71.080, a wash over the dark brown. Then there's these two dark brown, 71.042, 71.249 NATO brown. It doesn't really matter. Just just go with what you feel, you know. Like uh, don't worry about too much about uh, <laughs> you know, RLM 34, you know, C 
See, you can do that with this paint too, right? You just squeeze it on. That's what I like about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically stroke this. I'm not going to worry about, like, I don't want to cover it all in one go. I just want to get a, a tack coat on. You know what I mean? Like, just get some color on it. And, uh, you know, leave those streaks on there. Why not? Uh, you can play with play those in your favor. Be sloppy about it if you want. I am. I do it all the time. You just can't tell because it's got lots of layers on it. So I'm going to do that. That's a good bite. And then into the water it goes. And no stinky mess. No solvent to clean up. I'm done. Now I can walk away, right? And I'll be back and we'll show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I found this color. I was looking, so I had these four browns, <laughs> you know, but I couldn't find my burnt umber, but I went up and looked for it, and I found it. <laughs> I really like burnt umber. I think it's just a fantastic brown. I think it's the best brown there is, like the most versatile, I mean. Like you can use it for just, like it has a bit of a red sort of hue to it. it makes excellent washes, though, or for those of you that like to use the term taco sauce. Burnt umber makes the best taco sauce. <laughs> no, you can use any color for taco sauce. It's just paint and water. You just haven't tried it yet. You haven't broken out from that yet. And it doesn't stink. There's no smell. Right. Washes are just thin paint. That's all they are. So I'm just going to... Uh, I like those streaks because see this is a form of glazing. I see how you see the white showing through still. That's how you get wood grain effects. But it always looks the best when you don't think about it too much. If you don't overthink it. Anyway, that's another coat. So I'm going to do this three or four times until I get it, and then I'm going to put this rust, like a thin, more of a wash rust, just to get, you know, sort of more of this base color, this reddish sort of brown. See, it's kind of close, right? But this will kind of do it, I think, over top of that. It'll be close enough to that. And then I'll lay on the, the, the font, or I'll seal it. Probably put a, a gloss coat on it first, and then I'll lay the, just so it's nice and smooth for the dry, uh, dry transfer. And then I'll just lay that dry transfer. And of course, it'll be this bright white letters, and then I'll just put washes over top just to tone it down like that. Okay. Okay, so I have this sign now. The Philly sign is uh, several coats of uh, brown wash. You can see the wash, the tie marks. Like, I'm going to leave those. Like, I kind of like them, see? I'm okay with that. Because that's just, uh, that'll be underneath. Like, this, like, I'm going to paint this with just a coat of satin varnish over top of that, whether it changes that exact sort of shimmering or glimmering effect. I'm not sure. Uh, like, I mean, the stain. But I'm okay. That's just another layer. It's a weathered sign. So I'm going to put this satin varnish on here just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Because I want a good smooth surface when I put these dry transfers on. When I do the Phillies word or font on there. And then I'm going to seal it with matte after this is on. I'm going to pencil rub these on to here. And then I'm just going to cut in the cigar and, and uh, you know the other little sort of obscure kind of text or whatever uh, with a paintbrush or something. I'll just have a look at it though when we get there. And, and then I'm going to seal it with uh, not satin but the matte one. I like to have all three. right? Gloss, satin, and matte. It covers all the bases. And, uh, and then I'll, after it's sealed I'm just going to uh, put an oil wash. Because the oil wash is inherently more transparent. I don't want to put any opaque kind of wash over the font um, and I can put oil on top of varnish or, like, or sorry acrylic right oil on acrylic yes acrylic on oil no in most cases I mean if you let oil dry for a month 
and then you seal it with a flat coat then you could probably put water-based washes on it sure no problem but when you're progressing in a model and you don't have a lot of time in between uh, you got to be careful about reactions you'll never go wrong if you put oil or mineral spirits onto acrylic like the next day or even on the same day i've never had an issue ever but i have the other way around where i've put acrylic washes and paints on top of oil that wasn't dry or enamel that wasn't dry you know what i mean so that's what i'm going to do okay seal it up and then we'll move into the the uh, dry transfer font okay so i'm going to do this font here roman font this is close enough phillies and here's the sign, and I already started it. And what I do is I just tape, like tape the sign down, anchor it so it doesn't move. Okay, so the this like dry like dry transfers are pretty easy to do. You just got to make sure you line them up right, because once they're down, they're down. You can't slide them around like a a water slide decal, right? Um, so, but they do have the advantage, and that they do have a sort of a paint sort of texture to them when they go on which is you know it looks a little bit different but i mean you can solve that with a wet decal so if you can find the font in a, a slide decal um, then all the better you can slide it and move it around right but so this is the best size i could find which is about five millimeters high the font so i just found the center of the sign and then ran tape around not the full height of the font but just with a little bit of a space in between so I can eyeball it along okay and so uh, so I need the eye here and what I'm going to use to burnish is the end of this paintbrush which is perfect for this because it's a broad blunt soft burnishing tool right you can use a pencil or any piece of wood but don't use a sharp pointer though and make sure it's really dull like this okay but I find a fat paintbrush that's that's clean on the end and smooth works really good for this. Okay? And there are instructions on the back of this that shows you. Four, uh, one, two, three, four little storyboards on how to do it. it but I'm going to show you. Okay? So there's a little bit of a backing on this. So you just lift that off. It's not sticky. Just slide it off and put it to the side. So now I need an eye in here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this eye right here and I'm just going to line it up where I think it should be and I'm just going to rub it. And then just lift it and it's on, see? And then you can put this over top and just give it another rub just to make sure it's all down nice. And then it, I need two L's. So there's two there. And you know what? They look right about the perfect spacing as they are. So maybe I'll just... Yeah, they look... Uh, like I can sort of live with that spacing there. So I'll put that one down first like that. And then this one right after. So you only get one go with this, so. I might have water slide decals from uh, uh, can't remember the name of the sheet that I have, but uh, okay. So Philly, so that's I E. So let's finish this off. So I'm not overly concerned about the accuracy of this exactly. Anyway, it's a hand painted sign from this period. So put the eye there, but you want to get them straight though. So they look reasonably well. And then IES. And we're 
there's my S right there. I noticed the spacing on the font and the painting is not exactly symmetrical either, so that ought to work. Oh, I lost some of the S, but it went right over the E. Look at that. I got lucky again, see? I picked off the top of the... See that? Um, see how I lost part of the S there? But it, it, it went down right over the E just perfectly. <laughs> I've had some lucky breaks with this model, as most of you know by now. I sort of... The better angel is uh, seeing me through on this one. Okay, so that's going to be okay. So you want to just burnish it down with this paper that they give you just to make sure it's tight. You notice how I'm using the sort of long end of this, just rubbing it down. Um, okay, I'm going to put this back on there and put it back in its package. Okay. Now there's Phillies. Okay, so here's the sign. Uh, it's not perfect, but neither is the rendition. But I did another blow up so you can sort of see uh, there's this cigar with a little, you know, the little cigar ring on it. Only five cents. So I didn't really have this font, so I just sort of painted over it a bit, like more here on the American. The American looks like it's sort of hand painted, you know, right, as opposed to this Roman font. So what I did was is I, I used dry transfer and I just put it on an angle like that and I just went over it with a brush with a bit of white paint just to tweak it out just a little bit so it sort of fits this, right? Now I just need to seal it. Well, actually, I, do, I have to do one more thing. I just have to do that little uh, cigar ring label or seal that goes right here. I use a bit of yellow ochre. Like that. Okay, so you just witnessed what I just did, right? Oil paints with odorless solvent. You can put over acrylic anytime, anywhere. It won't eat the acrylic. It won't eat uh, Vallejo or Tamiya, I know that. Artist oils, burnt sienna, and raw umber light. Okay. Made a little bit of a thin wash, a transparency wash, and look what happened. You can see the color on the paper because I'm after, see this muted filtered look here, this rusty font. See how I changed the white to look like that almost? See? That's why I like oils in this case because they have a natural transparency and they always look better than acrylics do when you do that kind of a wash, when you want to tone down bright font or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to just leave that now. I mean, I could do a bit more. I could give another stroke. But I think this is pretty good, actually. 
think this will work. Um, if I want to add a little bit more red, there's some burnt sienna. I can do that as well. You don't need much. Okay. And then watch. You'll see how it'll change. See? You just vary the filter with the amount of oil paint that you use. But I'll leave that and see. I kind of like that. So that should work. And if it needs to be toned down a bit more, I'll just do it again later. Okay. Okay, so I just want to show you how I framed up the back of the sign. And I'll show you what I used here. I used number 8204HO scale 2x4s and then 291 angle, which as you know by now, if you've been following the channel, uh, I use a lot of this angle, 291, 292, I go through a lot of it. I use that for the trim inside the roof, etc. right angle. It's a pretty popular profile um, that I use. And then there's HO scale, which is actually close to 20 thou by 40 thou as well. This is more uh, spec'd out for HO scale though. You'll find that if I can just mention this, that sometimes at, uh, Evergreen, well, at least they used to use terms like HO scale, O scale. I think they even used S as well back in the day and possibly N scale with some siding sheet and stuff, but they mostly now, um, they've just gone to mostly just metric designations for all their increments and etc. But uh, you'll see this still. And I believe they still do produce a line of HO scale dimensional uh, lumber, if you want to use that term, or plastic. So I used the 2x4s in the right angle for the back of this, as you can see. Now, when I made this sign, it was very floppy, right? It was sort of had a, you know, bit of an S curve in it. So, you know, not, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but, you know, it wasn't totally straight. But that's okay, because that's the nice thing about Evergreen when you're building dimensionally. It's sort of like framing in the real world. Like it'll all straighten out. Like once I laid in, so I cut these strips one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just measured rough increments apart. And then I glued in two by fours, a little bit larger, and then I just flipped it over and then nipped them off, all right, with a number 18 blade. You know, as I do that, just nip them, nip, 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 all right? And then, and then I laid a two by four, a long strip across the back on top of them. Just glued a couple spots first and then f chased it down when, when, when these two set a bit. And it starts to pull it straight, eh? Okay, and then when I laid in the bottom strip here, it straightened out the sign almost perfect laser straight. And then I used the, uh, the right angle. I just glued right angle uprights vertical against those. Uh, I put another 2x4 on there. You can see. And I just put the right angle, right angle, right, right angle. And then I just glued them on a right angle, like a short leg. Just eyeballed them in, right? And then just put a square on them. In fact, I think with these, I just went like this, you know, just to make sure they were sort of square. Checked it on the roof kind of thing to make sure, you know, they're flush sort of thing. And then uh, I added this uh, two by four back, uh, strong back strut there right okay so yeah it's basically done i mean it's only ho scale and so i'm going to paint that i'll just cut some of that in with a brush and so maybe i'll just dust it down with my airbrush because the airbrush makes short work of this and makes nice coverage as well and this part here is still drying a bit of the oil so that'll take a few days but i'm liking the sign now and then it's going to go on here like this see let me just zoom the camera back out a bit So yeah, so this Philly sign just sits on top of the roof. If I tilt it up, it'll be out of focus. But anyway, you get the idea. And it'll mount, it mounts pretty close to the corner there. Okay.